What's up everybody, Axel Fuentes here, and we're back in American Truck Simulator. Today I've decided to be a bonehead, or a little bit of a bonehead, and uh, drive a Swift truck. So we're back in the International LT, because of course we are, this is my favorite truck. Uh, customized to Swift specs, minus being governed at 65. Uh, this one's governed as high as it'll go, because, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, not a big fan of trucks being governed at, um, at, uh, 65 miles an hour. I almost lost a train of thought. Uh, anyways, we're, uh, we have a drive-in and we are carrying TVs, I think. Okay, it would help if I hit the right button. Okay, it is TVs. Okay, excellent. Uh, so, I actually applied some of the stuff I've been learning at the driving school, uh, and that's how I got it this really good back done, because um, I learned at the driving school that when you're backing, if your trailer starts getting bigger in either one of your mirrors, that means that it's starting to jackknife a little bit. And you have to turn your wheel in the direction of the drift that the trailer is going. And that'll correct it. And I also learned that you have to turn your wheel just enough when you're backing up so that your tractor actually chases your trailer. I'll explain that more when we're backing up, but... Um, for now, let's get a move on. Yeah, so let me just casually stall on a Swift truck, though actually I don't think Swift has any manuals, so I'm already breaking continuity by by driving a manual Swift truck. Yes, I'm I I've definitely not forgotten my controls. I've definitely have been playing this game and I definitely remember how to drive this truck. I mean, you know it's it's like the driving school is teaching me on internationals or something, you know? Also with 10 speeds. Alright, Mr. Ford Fusion there can't actually make that turn because I'm um, blocking that turn with my trailer. So, let me get the heck out of the way. Nothing to see here, Mr. Police Officer. Just swifty swift forgetting how to do stuff as per usual. But yeah, so uh a driving school is proving to be well by the time this is uploaded, I'll be a bit further through the driving school actually. But since I've completely lost track of when I'm actually uploading videos, I'm not even gonna try to have oh, great. Train. Amtrak. Ooh, an international Lone Star. Let's see, anybody here? Anybody here? Nope. Now let's cross over these train tracks without shifting while on the tracks. I should have shifted before, but that's you know, whatever. To an extent, because I don't, uh, I don't want to smash up these TVs, you know? These are going from, from Amazon to Best Buy, and I don't want to be smashing up TVs. Okay, something just fell off my desk, but it's not vital, so I'm going to ignore it. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, these are some really nice TVs, and I don't want them getting smashed up and destroyed. You know? We, we love to make fun of Swifty Swift, but, you know, Swifty Swift is a good company. Around here, because that trooper has someone pulled over. And I'm going to remember to go into the right gear. Yeah, it's going pretty well so far. I've been stalling, and... Uh, forgetting how to shift the 10-speed manual, but, you know, it's it's all good. You know, we'll, we'll get there. Recently, uh, recently, at the driving school, we also started started doing pre-trip stuff. Uh, going through the whole truck and mentioning that every component is not cracked, not bent, not broken, leaking, uh, securely mounted, air loss tests, and things like that. So yeah, really exciting things happening. And before I know it, it'll be uh, my birthday, which is March 21st, and I'll be doing my road test. Because you see, at, uh, it would be the week before, but uh, 
at work we had to pick our vacations, you know, like the first or second week of January. And so I just put the week of my birthday as my vacation because whenever I have a vacation available, I try to take it during that week. Because let's let's be real, I, I hate working on my birthday. I did that once, let, never to do it again. Um, so I already had my vacation set and then I started the driving school. So it was all like, yeah, Ax, you need to pick a, you need to, you need to pick a week for your vacation. And then at the school, it's like, you need to pick a day for your driving test. And I'm like, well, shoot, I can't do it. Can't do it that week because I'll be at work. So I'll, you know, it has to be the next week. But the school that I'm going to is they, they will work with you with, with scheduling tests and stuff like that. And they also stay with you until you graduate. So even if you fail the road test 700 times, you know, provided your, your learner permit is not expired, uh, they will still, you know, stick with you. So yeah, my road test is scheduled for uh, Monday, March 21st, which is my 23rd birth... Holy heck, I'm going to be 23. Goodness. Feels like five minutes ago I was celebrating my 18th birthday. <laughs> I'll be 23. Goodness. <clears throat> but yeah, so for those of you who've never done a commercial driving road test, because you guys probably aren't commercial drivers, and that's okay. You know, we all have our career choices, but... um. It's a lot harder than a uh, driving test for a car, you see. <laughs> There's three parts to your test. The first part is 30 minute. you have a 30 minute time limit and it is a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle. I'm getting way too close to Home Depot over here. Uh, and this test, basically you gotta go through your whole truck and you gotta mention all your components and you basically, you, you gotta show the examiners that you know how to do a pre-trip inspection on a commercial vehicle before you start your day, for example. So like if you're at work, you know, getting in your truck and you're doing your pre-trip inspection. That, so you got to go over the whole truck and make sure, you know, that all your components are intact, that they're securely mounted, all your connections are good and all that stuff, but you have to mention every part by name. And you have to get 67 out of 90 parts correct, and you also have to do an air brake test, which is also part of the part of the pre-trip inspection. And the air test has to be perfect, because these trucks have air brakes and there's a specific way to check them for testing purposes, and you have to do that perfectly. And then you got to mention all at least 67 out of 90 components of the truck correctly. Identify them, state their condition, and what you're looking for. And you have a 30 minute time limit to do that, which doesn't seem like a lot. But when you, you know, after you've been working with these trucks for a while, you learn all the parts by name and you know exactly what to look for and all that stuff. And that 30 minute time limit time limit becomes nothing. And, you know, some people, when they finish that part of the test, they have a little bit of extra time, so they go over parts again in case they missed anything. So you have 30 minutes to do the pre-trip test, and then you have maneuverability, everyone's favorite. Don't you dare cut in front of me, I will ram into you. Um, and the maneuverability, there are f six possible tests for the maneuverability, but the examiner will probably only ask each driver to do three of them. Uh, and you have to do a straight back, which, you know, just straight, just back up straight, which is a lot harder than you would think because, you know, you have a trailer behind you. And you gotta know how to, uh, correct trailer drift like I was talking about at the start of the video. It's a straight back. And then you have to do what's called uh, an offset. An offset back. Uh, which basically, you know, you pull forward. And then you start backing up, but you back, you jackknife to the left or to the right. Um, and then back up straight again. So that's the offset back, and then you have to either do a parallel park to the driver's side, which is non-conventional, or a conventional parallel park to the passenger side. And then you have, uh, so those two, so that's uh, straight back, offset, parallel park one, parallel park two. Uh, and then you have the... Okay, my headphone connection seems to be a bit screwy. Guess I probably need to get a new headphone cable. Um, and I should probably try to stay in my lane. Goodness, I'm being true Swifty Swift over here. Uh, and then the last, um, the last possible test would be either a 90 degree or a 45 angle uh, alley dock. Uh, which basically, you know, you come up to, uh, you pull up forward past a 90, up to like 90 degrees up to your. Uh, up to your turn, and then you have to back up either to the left or to the right, depending on what the examiner wants. It's basically your your typical dock backing is what you gotta do.
and you have a 40 minute time limit for that which actually might seem like a bit much but you know you, you, you gotta just take your time when you're doing those backing maneuvers there is no reason to hurry through the test uh, you lose points of course if you run over a line or if you knock over a cone uh, you also lose points well for each maneuver you either get one or two uh, you get one or two free pull-ups that don't count against you and you also get two free uh, what's called goal get out and look so, you know, once you've done your parallel parking maneuver, you can get out and look, you know, once you've completed it to make sure that, you know, you're in the box. And same thing for your, um, for your, uh, parallel parking, or for your, um, there's my train of thought. Okay, so for the straight back, you, you get one, uh, get out and look. For the, uh, uh offset, you get one free pull up and one free get out and look. For the parallel parking and for the, um, for the, uh, dock docking back, you get uh, two free pull-ups and two free get out and looks. <clears throat> so you have a 40 minute time limit and all that stuff, so you did, it is it is passable. Just as long as you know you, you don't get nervous. And then you have the absolute best one of them all, the road test, which is not timed, uh, but uh, the examiner has you go out on a, on, a, on a preset route and, you know, sees how well you do on the road. And the route includes both, you know, Regular regular road driving and highway driving. Uh, you gotta show that you can you know make proper right and left hand turns without running over the curb. Uh, make sure that you're mining your space because you know you have a giant 53 foot long box behind you. And of course you know the school is teaching you uh, teaching us on manual trucks, so we gotta show that we know how to shift properly without you know grinding without grinding gears, without stalling. Um, now, when I when I drive these here in the simulator, you guys have seen me, you know, skip gears. Like, I start on third gear and then go to fifth and then go six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and then same thing when slowing down. You guys sometimes see me stop in sixth gear and then when I'm stopped, shift back down to third. You, you can skip gears in the test as you see fit. as long as you don't grind gears and as long as you don't stall and as long as you start in the right gear because you know if you start in the wrong gear you're gonna stall and if you start in a gear that's too low you could um you could fail the test for impeding traffic and then i i don't know if it'll be if this will apply to me at uh at uh, the driving school that, or at the test site that i'll be going to why are you stopping? You have the right of way and there's no traffic, and I can't make that turn around you. But I'll try. Oh yeah, which gives us a chance to admire the Swift truck. And the fact that there's a sticker on the side behind the bunk that says, uh, Caution Blind Spot. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so when you test at Roadmaster in Columbus, there's something that sometimes they have the um, the test uh, the testing drivers do, which uh, the examiner will ask the driver to pull over on the side of the highway and describe where he or she would place the reflective triangles uh, in case they were broken down, like as if as if they were you know stopped, or as if they were broken down where they would place the triangles based on you know what kind of road they're on. Because there's it's it's different for whatever kind of road you're on, where you would place your reflective triangles. So yeah, it is a lot of information and a lot to take in, but, uh, you know, that's what the school is there for. The school is going to teach me all the stuff that I need to be able to pass and get my Class A commercial driver license. Trailer tandems have cleared the curb. <laughs> it's gonna be full stop here. Now, 
when you're taking the test and when you're, you know, as a student, you're not supposed to be uh, shifting gears while you're in a turn. So that's a habit that I'm going to have to break when I start actually driving these things in real life. Alright, now I'll see if I can get this back done correctly. Uh, actually using my mirrors and not cheating and going into third person. I mentioned a couple of videos back that when I was driving these in real life, I would, you know, actually use my mirrors in here and not go into third person. So let's see how well I do that now. So we're in reverse low. I want to get in there. So I'm going to turn my wheel all the way to the right because I want the trailer to go to my left. So I'm going to use my mirrors and I'm also going to um, peek, out the, peek, blah, peek out the window. Now in real life, if I were doing this back, I would get out and look first. Just make sure there's no obstacles. The thing is, a lot of times, you know, just getting out and look, even if you you know, hold up traffic and other people trying to back up and stuff. That still, you know, is, could save your life, someone else's life, and it could also prevent, you know, damage to property. So actually, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to park really quickly. And then we'll pretend that I'm getting out and looking. So, I gotta go straight back into here, where those two morons are. And I, ha I actually have more space. If I'm looking from the driver's seat. It looks like I don't have a lot of space here, but I actually do have a little bit of space to swing the nose out a little bit. And there is no obstructions or anything here on this side. And anyone coming in will probably be stopped by this goofball here uh, because there is a truck trying to reverse here. So let me go ahead and get back into the cab. Right, parking brakes are off. Um... Reverse. And let me start uh, chasing the trailer. So I'm trying to get the tractor to chase the trailer's path. Which seems to be working out pretty well. Alright, there we go. Got it almost perfect. Let me pull up here. And this is assuming that, you know, I'm not testing so I can pull up as many times as I want to. During the test, you only get uh, you only get two free pull-ups and uh, two get out and looks. So technically, I've already used one of the get out and looks. So I reverse, just ease up into it, and I need to make sure that. So see, my trailer's getting bigger on the left side slightly, so I gotta go that way to correct, and then to the right to correct on the right side. And trailer is remaining the same size in both mirrors, which means it is not off tracking, or excuse me, it is not jackknifing. And there we go. So let me just apply the parking brakes, go back into neutral, and before I get out, and before I, you know, shut down and let's see. Okay, that's actually not bad. I'm I am just ever so slightly crooked, but if this were a test situation, I would have passed because the cones would have been here and uh, here. So I might have driven I might have driven over the base of a cone, but I I don't think I would have moved one out of its place. Or knocked one completely over. And I, I am ever so slightly to the uh, driver's side, but that can be easily fixed. But if this were a test situation, I would have passed. And if this were a situation where I were, you know, docking to get unloaded, I but it also would have been good. I would not have had to make any corrections. Uh, there we go. Yep, that is not bad at all. So actually, I'm going to correct that a little bit. So let us go, uh, third gear. So I'm ever so slightly to the driver's side, so I'm going to go to the, uh, passenger side more. So I want the trailer to go to the right, so I'm going to turn the wheel ever so slightly to the left. So the trailer is bigger on the driver's side, so I gotta turn to that side. And now it's good. Okay, I think I did jackknife ever so slightly. Also, I think I think my headphones are busted because the, the sound quality of my microphone and the game keeps changing at random. So I think I think my headphones are busted. <laughs> Not something I was wanting to spend more money on. All right, let's try one more time. So I need to go to the right because I'm now way too 
way too close to the driver's side. See how that looks. Okay, slightly worse than before. Okay, so I need to pull forward. Yeah, I need to just pull forward to the right a little bit and then just literally just straight back. Alright, there you go. And then just straight back. So I'm going to show that the straight back is not as easy as it sounds. You just got to take your time, watch your mirrors, and correct trailer drift as necessary. Okay, I'm still slight. I'm again, I'm still crooked, but. I still would have passed like this. But I will take that. So let us shut down and complete it. There we go. Time taken five hours, but that's just because I took a little bit longer with uh, the backing maneuvers, of course. But uh, yeah, not bad. And we can still, you know, appreciate this, this Swift truck. I know most Swift trucks are white, but a couple of them are blue. I, I think I like the blue trucks better. The blue looks a lot nicer. And this is the same, uh, from the same skin pack that I've been using that's made by Arkin Pulse or person's name. Uh, it'll be, uh, link in the description, of course. And the, the Swift trailer is also from that same pack. So, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching me, uh, be a bonehead. And um, thank you very much, guys, for patience with me while uh, I have this crazy upload schedule. And thank you for tuning in on the driving lessons and stuff that I've learned lately. I'll catch you guys next time here on American Truck Simulator. Bye-bye. Axel Fuentes.